A lot of people might assume that in order to go from being unhappy to happy, we have to find the willpower to change our behavior, that we have to do something differently to begin the trail towards feeling satisfied with our lives and with ourselves. But that's not entirely true, or rather, that's not the most organic way to happiness. There is, in fact, a much easier way. In its evolution over a few hundred thousand years, the human mind came to possess a bias for tasks that feel relatively important. This occurred for obvious reasons. Our predecessors, living in small nomadic groups, needed to spend their time and mental effort on things that were conducive to survival and even prosperity, which would further increase their chances of survival. These were tasks like hunting, gathering, socializing, exploring, inventing, discovering, and even relaxing and playing with others. These and all the tasks humans spent their time on had direct and indirect benefits that increased the length and quality of life to some extent. The bias for activities like these explains why our minds tend to shift from dull tasks or difficult activities to something more interesting or achievable. We can't bear to waste our precious time and mental resources. Whenever both ancient and modern day humans find themselves in the middle of a moment or a task that seems to not serve a purpose, or worse, if they're hindered from pursuing purposeful tasks, they experience dissatisfaction. At times like these, we find ourselves somewhere along the dissatisfaction spectrum, ranging from simple boredom to the extremes of existential suffering and severe depression. When a person is in this circumstance, the initial thought to solve this predicament might be to simply change the task at hand. Stop doing the dull thing you're doing. Go do something more satisfying or meaningful. Free yourself from whatever is limiting you. All of that is sound advice that likely works in many instances. But what about when the obstacle is your job, your only source of income? It doesn't feel meaningful, but it allows you to provide for your family. What about if the things you used to enjoy, things that used to bring joy and passion to you, no longer do that? Even more complicated, what if you just simply don't know why you're unhappy? You live a reasonably comfortable life, but still, you feel far away from who you'd like to be or how you'd like to feel. Many people are in complex situations like these where changing your behavior might be an overly simple answer to try to apply to their troubles and might possibly feel too oppressively difficult. So what is the answer? What might actually be the first step to finding the satisfaction that is missing? Finding purpose is the answer. Finding meaning in all the moments that pass you by, even while your environment, your situation, and the people around you refuse to change. If you ask someone suffering deep in the depths of depression, they might describe to you that it feels as though their efforts are meaningless, that there is pain and hardship in most moments without reason or movement towards something purposeful. For every person bored with their routines or dissatisfied with their lives, they likely feel like they are not doing something of importance, that they are far too disconnected from having meaning in what they do. So they have to find their purpose. How meaningful your life and your efforts are contribute significantly more to your satisfaction with your life than how easy or hard your circumstances are. This is precisely why parents who experience tremendous stress and financial difficulty in raising children, hardship that otherwise might not exist if they didn't become parents, all tend to say they wouldn't have it any other way. They would rather live through how tough it is to be a parent, the sleeplessness, the worry, the stress, the anger, because it's one of the most meaningful things in the entirety of their lives. Like I said, humans are pre-wired to tend to activities that are of some kind of importance 
And that includes some really hard things. So when we feel there is purpose in what we are doing, when there's meaning in the lives we're living, we can make our way through the most difficult situations possible. So now you might be wondering how, how do I go get meaning and purpose in my life? In some ways you likely already know how you've probably just been relegating it to only specific areas of your life. Think of all the most important and joyous moments of your life so far. It might be your graduation or your wedding day. It might be the birth of your child. Maybe it was a trip you took that changed your life. In each of these huge moments in your life, you were staring straight into the face of the depth of something meaningful. You married your partner because love and commitment were meaningful. And so the rest of your lives together are dedicated to those things. That trip to a new place changed your life because it showed you a new perspective, a different way to live and see the world, maybe even a different way to see yourself. And from there, you wanted that new difference to infiltrate the rest of the moments you experience in life. In all of these examples, you grabbed hold of something important, whether that be love, growth, self-understanding, faith, patience, peace, confidence, maybe it's joy, connection, ambition, anything you can imagine that has sincere significance to you. You held that thing directly in front of you and made it relevant to every moment you walked through. Weeks after your wedding day, you're working the same job, living in the same town, dealing with the same stressors, but now a commitment to someone important is forever flowing through you and standing right behind every thought and decision you have. You're in the same life and dealing with the same things, but the joy of having promised a forever with someone is present and that changes things. So that's how you find purpose and meaning. You look at what is important to you. Look at the thing you want to keep your eyes on from moment to moment. And then you notice how that meaningful thing lives and breathes in every moment. How do love and commitment continue to show up and be important, not only weeks after your wedding, but years after, decades and grandchildren later even? How do you see it in every single one of those moments? Ask the same of whatever is meaningful to you. How does that thing show up in every single moment moving forward, even the moments that seem easy to miss? How is that meaning still there when you're getting ready for bed at night or when you're preparing your breakfast in the morning? Even when you keep living mostly the same life, doing the same stuff, how do you know it's present? How do you find that significance and hold it close the way wedding vows make a person really grasp it tightly to the chest. When you find that significance and hold it close, meaning flows through the things you do. It can be really hard to take the first steps to trying to find happiness, but it is nearly impossible to be unhappy when you have meaning and purpose in your life.